Hello and welcome to Shipley's webinar, our final webinar in the Back to Basics series, Business Development Leadership. I'm Mallory Price and will want monitor today's session. Joining me today are Brad Douglas, President and CEO, Janae Sutton, CFO and Controller, David Bull, Senior Vice President of Business Winning Services, and Daryl Jones, Senior Vice President of Business Development. If you have any questions during the webinar, please type them into the questions tab in your control panel. We will answer as many as we can. Brad, the time is yours. Okay, uh, thanks everyone for spending a little time with us today. And uh, thanks for um, my uh, partners in crime here at Shipley for, for joining on this panel discussion. We, we got some really good feedback from industry and, and, uh, and some uh, leaders that we admire and respect in, in the business development profession. And we've tried to integrate their thoughts, their ideas uh, uh, into this webinar. Uh, this is a really broad topic. Uh, you know, we could probably spend days and weeks on this. And from looking at the registration list for the webinar, uh, we've got people from all shapes and sizes of companies. So we've got large companies with massive global organizations, as well as uh, small, uh, very small businesses, uh, independent businesses. So we're, we'll try our best to keep our comments fairly uh, universal. Uh, so that most of what we say will apply across the board. So again, thank you for joining us. Um, we, we appreciate your, your uh, willingness to, to uh, participate. And as Mallory said, if, if you have questions, uh, please feel free to, uh, to pass those along. Okay, um, let's get started. Uh, what we wanna cover, we'll just real quickly, we wanted to cover mainly four uh, 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 areas of information, if you will. We want to first lead off with some very common business development leadership challenges that we see out there in industry. Um, and we'll talk about those. Then we want to go through a list of, of 10 business development leadership priorities, things that we as, as BD leaders ought to be thinking about, ought to be on our mind, ought to be getting better at. We'll then talk about, again, ways that we might implement uh, if we need uh, to improve and get better, how could we maybe do that uh, quickly and, and get some leverage? And as time permits, we uh, want to respect your time. We will answer some questions and, and have some further discussions. So I, I invite uh, Janae and David, uh, Daryl, uh, please chime in. Uh, we'll make this um, conversational as possible. All right common business development leadership challenges, and I'm guessing this will resonate with some of you. Um, there's this little wheel here we're showing um, that has uh, five components. Uh, five components of what we believe successful business development organizations uh, get involved in. And over time, as we work with so many companies and so many industries globally, uh, we have learned that really when it comes to identifying best practices in business development, that uh, what activities we should be doing, that's pretty easy as a leader. If I'm a leader, it's, it's fairly easy for me to know what activities my team should be doing. Uh, it's also fairly easy to get coaching or training or mentoring or read books on uh, helping my people or my team have the ability to perform. Where we often fall short and I, is, is this other area, this commitment to perform as a leader. So articulating a path to get better, knowing what we should be doing, those aren't the hard things. The hard part of business development leadership is making the commitment. It could be financial, it could be personnel, it could be a lot of different things. But that commitment to perform is the most common challenge we find. And part of that commitment to perform means being willing to measure and verify. Are we measuring success and are we verifying success? Do we know our performance gaps? Another challenge we have as leaders in business development, any leader really, is balance. How, how do we balance time, resources, 
you know, focusing our time in the trenches of the business versus, you know, looking up the ladder at the shareholders, you know, or, or the board of directors. That, that's a hard balance to know where to spend time and energy. And then this idea of short-term versus long-term objectives. That's always, especially in business development leadership, that is always a challenge. So here you have this cartoon you've probably seen before where there's this, this beautiful new automatic weapon ready to, to apply that, uh, you know, I'm sure it, the leader says, I'm sure it's going to work, but we've got a battle to win today. And so, you know, how many times do we get so focused on the here and now and the short term winning the battle and we ignore and don't don't look forward into the bigger picture. That's always a challenge. Uh, another challenge we have sometimes as leaders is, you know, we, we don't really we don't really have a good barometer of where we are. As a business development function in our organization and as a leader, where are we? Well, there's this model, uh, this business development capability maturity model that's um, well established out in industry that really establishes like a CMMI model, five different levels. You know, where are we? Are we at the stage one, level one, where every time we have to go win business and go compete, we're reinventing the wheel? It's chaos. It's firefighting. Or are we at level two, where we've got somewhat of a process to find and it's somewhat repeatable? We're leveraging past experience. Level three, is it well-defined, our BD process? Do people know their roles and responsibilities? Uh, level four, are, are we really managing to this, th this process, this business development process? Very few organizations really ever reach level five, where you've got a well-oiled machine in business development. You're pursuing the right kind of business uh, in the right markets. You're winning your share. You're winning your recompete. Um, but we need to, the point is, the leadership challenge is taking a breather to figure out where we are and where we want to be. If we're at level one, do we want to work toward being level three? If we're at two, do we want to be level three? Where are we in our business development maturity? And I challenge all of us on this webinar to ask ourselves, you know, where's our organization? Uh, are we down in the initial phase and, or have we actually established a BD process that our people can embrace? Another common challenge we see, and you've probably heard us say this before, but you, you know, it's, it's our culture. What is our culture? Does our team, does our company, our organization, do we have a culture that we expect to win business? Business development is about winning. It's about generating revenue. And we need to have a culture where winning isn't an option. It's expected. So we need to set some targets. What, is, what are our win rates? What should they be? Our capture ratios. Do, uh, do we expect everyone to contribute? Do they know their role, responsibility? You know, have kind of a no excuse for losing mentality and mindset. As leaders, we have to set the tone. It's a leadership priority to expect in a culture that we are going to go compete and win. Not every time, but we need to win our share. And then this gets back to that very first slide we showed, uh, metrics. We need to measure and verify all the time. That has to become part of our business development culture. One last area I think of challenge for business development leaders that we all face is this idea of just putting kind of a stake in the ground and say, all right, these are the key process areas for our business development team. Uh, and so here are four areas for you to consider and for you to go back and look at your organization and ask, it aligns with the maturity model, where are we as far as our customer? Do we have a good relationship with our customers? Uh, are we generating opportunities? Are we researching opportunities? The second area is focus. How focused is our management team on competing and winning? The quality, do we have quality measures for our proposals, our capture plans, our strategies? 
And then we need to look at the people, the third KPA. Uh, do we have high performing teams? Do, we, teams? do we have the right talent in the right positions? Are we matching task to talent? And then finally, capability. Do we have that repeatable process, that well-defined process, and do we have the necessary infrastructure? To the extent that we don't take a look at these, these key process areas and know where we're at, it's very difficult to lead. Uh, so I, I, I present or we present these four KPAs when it comes to business development leadership. We need to be looking at each of these areas all the time and trying to improve and get better. Okay, these are, uh, these are 10 areas as we talk to people in industry and, and we got feedback on this particular topic. Uh, these are 10 areas that, that came to surface. And so we'll, we'll address each of these briefly. We only have less than an hour here on this webinar. So we won't have time obviously to dive into all of these, but we'll focus on these 10 business development leadership priorities, things that as leaders we need to be focusing on. And uh, we'll go through these kind of one at a time. As, as you have questions, if you have questions, feel free to shoot those in, Mallory will We'll bring those up and we'll we'll try to address those. And this, David, uh, Janae, Daryl, we'd welcome your input here. So, David, I'm I, I'm going to ask you to, to take the lead on this these first uh, few uh, slides here, and that is the area of how important is it for a business development leader to clearly identify uh, roles and responsibilities within the team. Thanks, Brad. And folks, it's very, very critical to identify. We all can't do it all. And so to improve our efficiency, improve our effectiveness, and to improve our capacity and our capability, we must recognize that certain people, certain leaders have specific strengths and specific areas and, and, and roles in, of accountability. And across the top, you'll see activities. Down the left side, you see five generic labor categories that pretty much every industry or not industry but every uh, business has be it large small commercial federal international whatever and then across the bottom you see phases and so the the point to this is recognize who does what and when it becomes very important that for example a business development manager someone who has probably the larger picture and leads probably a lot of people in an organizational capacity they're out there at the left looking at the plan and looking at the pipeline and trying to understand where we want to go and it typically aligns with the leadership's vision of what that company needs to be doing. As we get more finite as we move down, you begin to see that a lot of areas that we participate in, program management and proposal management, now it's a little bit more specific to an opportunity to maybe a business decision that was made by those other folks. But the key here, folks, is you know, we need to understand who does what, who is accountable for what, and when typically in the business development life cycle that that happens. That's, that's good. And then, uh, David, one, one comment we got from talking to people, and I, I'd ask you to maybe address this too, is there, you know, it's not always clear, and this we, we talk about this a lot, but it's not always clear the, the difference between, you know, a manager and a leader. And so maybe you could just spend a few minutes on this as well. Well, um, a manager is like tactical. A leader is visionary. And perhaps something else that comes to mind is a manager, uh, unfortunately, like it or not, a manager has we dotted line. And, and so uh, we kind of have to fall into place. An org chart shows you where they belong, so on and so forth. A leader has the vision, and we want to follow because we believe in the same principles and the same visions and the same ideas and the same uh, you know things that are important to us look down the manager here cope with complexity versus a leader who copes with change the manager is very tactical folks I mean plan and budget organize and staff contra control and solve problems those are all tactical day-to-day -day. that person has been brought in specific to their skill set and specific to their capabilities and perhaps past performance in other jobs 
they manage the the workload on a day-to-day -day basis. A leader kind of steps out and says, okay, where are we going to be six months from now? Where are we going to be a year from now? And yeah, they have to understand and and know that it can be executed by a manager, but the leader is a much bigger visionary person. And so leaders are, you know, motivating you to, hey, this is a new market for us. We, we're going to succeed here. Here's how our people are going to be staffed and aligned. You know, here's the direction. Here's where we're going to be in three months, six months, nine months. And back to Brad, we're going to measure. We're going to validate. We're going to course correct. We're going to get input, but this is where we believe we need to be. And so the discovery of the big picture, uh, a lot of collaborativeness amongst the people, but you know, typically the leader is the one that is looking on that horizon as to where do we need to be, where do we need to grow, and how are we going to get there, and is it executable? So there's kind of the difference. One's tactical, one's visionary. Good. Very good. And then uh, uh, kind of aligned to what you said earlier, David, about this make sure our team understands roles and responsibilities. There's this notion that we really, as leaders, need to be able to leverage, uh, like you said, the talent uh, of our team. You, you changed the picture on this one, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, folks, this is so true in our daily lives, and I ask you to really look inwardly on this picture and, and I found this to be very, very valid that, um, you know, if I don't have something that's very demanding, if I don't have a project that is just really, really stretching my capabilities, I'm bored and I'm inefficient and I'm ineffective and, and sometimes I'm just not an asset at all. And so, you know, we can't allow that to happen. We must, as leaders, be constantly looking to challenge not only ourselves, but those around us. And so the second we second bullet there we have to be very careful for also if i get something that i know i can't do and i'm helpless what's my reaction i'm frustrated my hands are tied i just don't either have the capacity or have the skill set or understand what's going on and so i can't lead i can't be anything but frustrated the key combination is is the best situation which is match the capability and you know allow them and describe to them what peak performance is and you know I've had a brother who's tried to teach me to rock climb and let me tell you you get in over your head and you fall um, you get in under your head and you just kind of walk up and so the challenge is give me that face that uh, maximizes my capacity to challenge me but also is doable so that I learn but I stretch myself that I can become a better leader. That's the combination. You must provide business development personnel with the skills and the infrastructure to assign the task match to their capability. That's a tough challenge because, you know, in either case, if we don't do it accurately, the probability of not being as successful and not being as capable of leading uh, is great that we'll, we won't be successful. Great points, and and you know, um, kind of along with this analogy, is for those that have climbed, um, no two rock faces are the same. You know, every climb is different, every climb is unique, and uh, there's no easy answer. But that's part of our leadership challenge, is that every pursuit we go after, or maybe every new market, or every complex proposal we have to put together. You know, there's no cookie cutter, cutter answer. And so as leaders, part of um, the analogy here, David, that you alluded to is, is the flexibility to assign different people to different tasks at different times um, because it, it's just uh, everyone's a little bit unique. So thanks for that. Uh, and then the, the the one other thing, uh, one of our our ten um, leadership priorities that we heard loud and clear from people as we pulsed industry was, you know, it's an overused word, perhaps I don't know what other word to use, but this idea of being collaborative. Uh, and David, as as a as one of the the very best proposal managers out there in industry, this certainly is is part of your responsibility. Um, 
Brad, I agree. There is not a better word than collaboration. And and when we, you know, we get out on a um, on an assignment, folks, we are better as a team typically than we are as an individual. And so we must recognize that you know somebody may have the leadership management role, somebody might have the leadership visionary role, but if they stand by themselves and they don't collaborate often we don't get the benefit of those inputs and our output the uh the, the delivery the deliverable is not as good as if we had would have collaborated and brought these people together what you see here typically is five people the opportunity he or she who brought the uh, opportunity to the table the solution architect he or she who's going to design it the capture manager is is the one that is going to understand who's competing, what's the best cost to win, what are our core capabilities, and, and you know what does the customer really want. And then, of course, the program manager is, is going to have to execute, and the proposal manager is going to have to deliver the message. Can you imagine if each one of these people operated without the collaboration, if they operated on their own? Sure, they have the leadership skills, probably because of the roles that they're in, that they could get you there. But the, the point here is by a collaborative nature, by discussing all of these in a environment where, you know, it's everything's fair game, it's a brainstorming, you know, no idea is is unappreciated, the leadership then takes over and collectively the team becomes the leader and you deliver probably the best opportunity or the best response or the best deliverable that gives you the best probability of winning. So keep in mind that collaborativeness is in fact a leadership skill in and of itself when you can put your perhaps ego or your I need to be the most important person here aside and you can actually just use your inherent leadership skills but in a collaborative nature to build the team up and get that product out the door. Thanks, David. And, and uh, Janae's with us. Janae is, is our CFO uh, and has been in a, a leadership role on the finance side for a long time. And and we had a recent experience, Janae, here internally working a, a major pursuit where, right. <laughs> thank yeah. goodness, you were part of this collaborative team early. Well, yeah, including finance early is so important. Um, the the impact on decisions, um, the financial impact on, on these decisions is so critical. Um, you've got to get finance involved early to avoid, avoid the unexpected. I mean, there's things that come up that we, in the early stages, looking at it, it seems, it seems like the way to go forward. And when we, when we gather together and we work numbers, Sometimes it's not the way to go. Exactly. Sometimes yeah. changes have to be made or we have to go a different direction. So it's so important to involve um, finance um, when building a business case. Yeah, great point. Thank you. All right. Um, this probably goes without saying, but we'll say it anyway um, because we <laughs> – a business development leader that is effective in his or her, her role, uh, this gets back to that, that pyramid, that um, maturity pyramid, if you will. We have to embrace and understand what the business development life cycle is. You know, it doesn't start at capture management or sales. It doesn't end with the submittal of a proposal. A business development life cycle involves all aspects of the business. You know, everything from the strategic plan and what markets we position ourselves in all the way through executing on a successful contract. So um, unfortunately, sometimes business development leaders get pigeonholed into believing all they're responsible for is, is competing for a winning business. We've got to think much broader than that. We have to be an integral part of the full uh, business life cycle, if you will, and, and really understand that. And part of that, as we look to the left of this, this busy chart here, is this idea of understanding 
and embracing what markets we really should be in and 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 are are competing in. So, Daryl, if if you wouldn't mind talking about a little bit, your role at, at Shipley is overseeing all of business development, and so you're keen on, you know, what market should we be approaching? Where should we be working? If you wouldn't mind, spend a little time on this. Sure, Brad. Yeah, um, maybe, you know, to expand on that a little bit, uh, all through the years as I've worked with clients um, related to their business development activities, the, you know, the prior slide that showed a very complex approach, uh, our 96 step BD life cycle, we recognize and understand that that is just a model, that, that um, it has to be right sized for the kinds of customers you're serving and the types of products or services that you're selling in the market. But the fundamental part of that is that the, the key elements of identifying opportunities and making decisions about which opportunities to pursue and ultimately which opportunities you would want to submit a proposal for, that overarching framework is really the same. And good BD leaders understand that, that business development is not a department that it is a holistic view of an organization and the roles and responsibilities of people that uh, must contribute effectively to win business. I'm being a little repetitive, but essentially the BD process, a BD leader has to, has to embrace that. And we do that the same here. I mean, I, I really would not do business development in this organization without people like David and Brad and Janae and the folks that are out there uh, delivering our services, whether it be training or consulting and, and leveraging them for solution development and things like that. So BD is a, you know, is a full, full view of the organization. Well, and, and here again, we, we've, uh, you, you'll hear me chime in a lot on the finance part of it because we, we have to include finance to provide that reality check um, when determining market it, markets and the profitability, the metrics involved. And, and again, um, we just went through a, Brad mentioned this, we, we were um, in the middle of a, a, a bid and, and it was days of working through numbers to make sure, is this something we should do? It, it, can we make money? Does it make sense? Are we are we going down a path that's not going to make sense? And and it was all of us gathering together, collaborating, and and working the numbers. And and it was it was critical to the the success of this. So I I can't emphasize this enough that finance has to be included. Um, through all of these steps in order to make sure that this is the right path that we're taking. Well, and, and to your point, Janae, you know, it, on the left of this slide here, these company drivers, um, you know, and our desires as a company, that strategic plan always involves, heavily involves <laughs> profitability, our, our financial metrics. Exactly. In fact, Mallory, I think we have a question submitted. Maybe this is a good time to answer that. Yeah, so the question is, what are the common metrics, leading and lagging, used to evaluate business development success? Okay, um, without getting specific into any one industry or niche, uh, that's a great question, leading and lagging metrics. I'm gonna kind of point to this slide over here on the left side where it says the strategic plan. Uh, the, met it, the answer to the question is it depends. Is the strategic plan to grow the business? Is it to grow the business for a few years and then exit? Uh, is it to stay status quo in top line but increase bottom line? Uh, so the metrics, uh, again, I hate to say it because I sound like a, it's a political answer, but it depends on your vision your mission, your strategic plan, all of these things on the left hand of this slide determine what your metrics ought to be. If if your metric, if your strategic plan says growth, 20% top line, 15% bottom line growth, then you build metrics to support that plan. 
lagging indicators would always be how did we do against last year? How are we doing against our peers? How are we doing in our specific industry as far as capture ratios? Are we getting our fair share of the market share out there? Are we losing market share? Uh, so win rate is one simp one metric, but boy, too many companies think that is the end all. It is not a win rate on how much how much you how many you win versus how many you propose on is is an insignificant number if it doesn't align with your strategic goal and your vision. So uh, too often as business development leaders, we fall back on the easy metrics, which is win rate capture ratio, things like that. Bottom line, though, does it align with our overall corporate vision, mission, and goals? So thanks, Daryl, for that. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of uh, – th this, this is not an uncommon graphic. This is kind of business leadership ma management 101. But as leaders, as business development leaders, we have to be aligned with others in our company who might be determining what markets we're involved in. You know, are, are we competing in new markets uh, with new products or existing markets with existing products? You know, what quadrant are we competing in and are we willing to pay the price? Are we willing to take the risk and invest the money and resources to go after quadrant four, new products in new markets, or based on the governance of the company, the board of directors, the strategic plan, are we gonna be more conservative and cautious and focus on quadrant one, which is our core business, existing products and services to existing markets. So there's these four basic quadrants, and we have to, as leaders, we have to be part of that equation. This isn't something we necessarily decide as BD leaders, but we have to step forward and have an input. Is it realistic for us to really take and, and spend the money to research, develop, and design a new product line, new service, and penetrate a new market? What's it going to take? Uh, so there you see kind of these four quadrants and there's a couple that are middle ground, you know, new markets, existing products, new products and existing markets. So um, that's a business decision and that is a leadership priority for all of us. All right. Um, uh, business development leaders focus on opportunities with the highest probability of win. Um, Daryl, do you mind just commenting on this idea of, of uh, a leader overseeing the pipeline? Yeah, yeah, Brad, this, this is really so critical in any business development organization. I, I have heard that, you know, some companies say that our strategy is to bid everything we can. And that's truly their strategy. It's a stated strategy. The reality is that all organizations have limited resources to apply to business development. So what the critical uh, element of this and what makes an effective BD leader is starting out with an array of opportunities or a pipeline. You know, sometimes this is represented as a funnel uh, as the number of opportunities in the pipeline decrease. But the concept really is one of as quickly as possible, it is the business development leaders responsibility to make sure that sure losers and probable losers uh, are eliminated from the pipeline as quickly as possible. That allows resources to be redirected during the capture, proposal planning, and preparation phase uh, as a result of the gate reviews, which we'll talk about in a minute, to reduce the number of proposals submitted with the probability of win. That is best practice. Great points. Yeah, uh, you know, being aware of the funnel, managing the pipeline. Um, you know, we can't say that it's someone else's job. If we're the leader of business development, it, it's us. You know, and uh, well, we had a comment. Uh, Mallory just passed to me on the last slide. Um, you know, is is that quadrant kind of like a SWAT? Well, yes. 
SWOT analysis, strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats, definitely would be part of assessing this risk and this necessary investment to go into market. So thank you for bringing that point up because the SWOT analysis certainly is part of this responsibility we have to determine what markets we should be in. Okay, the next priority, um, it sounds self-explanatory, but too often we we don't participate as leaders. We, we say, oh, that's someone else's job. A business development leader that is, is really good is aware of the customer's buying processes. How, who is our market and how do they typically buy? So many of you on this webinar are probably competing in the federal, state, or local government areas and markets. We have to understand their acquisition process. Their, how do they go about acquiring products and services? And we have to align our BD organization teams uh, process approach to the customer buying process. So I won't dwell on this a lot just bring it up that sometimes we avoid this, uh, sometimes we pass it off, oh, it's someone else's job. No, we need to understand how our customers buy. In a business-to-business -business setting, if we're competing as one business to another, it's our responsibility to understand the likely buying patterns of our most, most likely um, uh, customers. The same exact thing goes with customer relationships. And, and I think you all know this and you probably see this in your companies. The really strong business development leaders are out there. They are out um, customer facing, market facing. They're interacting at high levels, at strategic levels. They build customer relationships. They don't suggest that it's someone else's job. They want to be out there. They should be out there. So a business development leader that is really good helps the company advance from what we, where we might be an unknown supplier, you know, just kind of a, a vendor, if you will, one of many, help advance that relationship to where we are viewed as a strategic and necessary partner to our customer. That's the responsibility of a leader, is to be that face, to be that voice, to, to provide the vision and, and build those customer relationships. So along with that, in a, uh, right along with that, is understanding what customers care about. Um, if we're not in the trenches a little bit, if we're not out meeting with customers and interfacing with them, we have no idea what some of their hidden issues are, some of their priorities. So here you see this iceberg analogy. You know, the real market customer issues are, are below the surface. You know, they're not what we see in an RFP or they're not what we see at industry day uh, or a bidder's conference. The real issues, motivators, hot buttons that we need to be aware of as leaders they're underneath the surface. And it's our responsibility to be part of uncovering that and, and understanding some of those hidden requirements, not just those things on the left, you know, that are, that are sometimes spelled out in an RFP. Okay, uh, this, this gets a little bit tactical maybe, but we heard it enough as we talked to people about this topic. Um, they suggested we include this as a priority for business development leaders. So, David, I'm going to ask you, um, because you've led so many pursuits and, and captures and proposals, to talk about why it's important for business development leaders to really understand and be involved in this idea of decision gates and decision gate reviews. Well, Brad, it, it's actually really simple. A leader will have the courage and will have the oversight to know that they can't do everything. And just like Daryl and you have alluded to, there's got to be a
have these gate reviews at, at between each, you know, the phases of the business development. We need to have people that will bring certain types of information, like perhaps a Janae type person that'll have the financials of winning versus losing or participating or not participating. What's our image? But the bottom line here is we will not win everything that we go after. And what's even more important is we pretty much know that if we focus on what we can win, just like what you said, it's not a matter of winning everything. It's what you win that aligns to your business future, your business vision, your business goals, and you know gives your organization back its quality of life. And so a good leader will know and understand that balance, will know and understand those um, nuances and be able to say, okay, folks, where do we stand on these? And if there's certain criteria or if there's certain situations that say, hey, we're not in a good position, perhaps we just didn't know this customer as well, perhaps we believe somebody else influenced it, a good leader will have the courage to say no bid. And, you know, that's a maturity issue, and leaders typically have that maturity that say we're just not there. And so regardless of where it comes in the business development life cycle, our organization should have these gate reviews every every position so that you uh, you um, can, in fact, uh, help us, you know, make those decisions and guide the people into the most effective uh opportunities that you can in fact win. I kind yeah. of covered two slides there, Brad. Sorry. No, no, that's good. Um, you know, so uh, as we engage with clients, uh, this is a challenge uh, for many companies, large and small. Uh, David talked about this, this idea of discipline. You know, there's, there's certain times certain milestones along the way where th we have to make these, like David said, these tough decisions. And Janae, uh, you know, fine <laughs> to your point, um, there's there's gates here where we have to include finance, right? I mean, that's right. Um, does this make good business sense? Um, and that's, that's where our financial team, uh, as part of our BD leadership team, becomes so crucial. And then there's this idea of color teams. And again, this kind of, this kind of gets tactical, but when we are in the middle of a pursuit or a, a major proposal effort, uh, to just to reinforce what David said, these color team reviews, these these proposal reviews to make sure we're answering the mail and we're we're on target are are critical. All right. Um, this is a big one. Um, uh, this uh, image actually comes from a company. Um, I don't like to endorse specific companies on these webinars, but, but this company is, is fantastic. It's called Partners in Leadership. They're a leadership training and consulting firm. Uh, and, you know, that they've come up with this idea of this accountability line. And this comes down to business development leadership. And we have to be better at holding our people accountable. So when we see behavior in our organizations, our teams that are here, illustrated here on this image that are below the accountability line, things like, oh, I'm going to wait and see what happens before I engage, or, oh, that's not really my job. Um, well, I'm going to just kind of ignore this or deny involvement or well, someone else really did that. It wasn't mine. Cover your tail type behavior, confusion. When we see this in our organization, we're becoming dysfunctional because we're operating without holding people accountable. Our goal is to have our organization, our team, get above that line and start getting to where they see a challenge, they see a need, they see an opportunity, they own it, they solve it, and they go get it done. That becomes the, of an effective business development organization. And as leaders, that's what we have to do. We have to hold people accountable as much as possible. Okay, the next priority area um, is this idea of capture. And um, again, this might sound a little tactical, 
but BD leaders have to be involved and stay integrated with the capture process. And this gets, this is almost like that stair step uh, image we showed before, moving from a unknown vendor position to a, more of a favored position. And uh, good leaders are involved in this. And uh, how, what do we need to do? Who do we need to meet with, talk with? What 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 um, tasks do we need to take to advance these relationships as part of our capture process? So, Daryl, as as our business development leader, would you talk us through the advantages of of having your team work through this actual process of developing capture plans? Yeah, sure will, Brad. And I think it's important to note here that capture plans and organizations look can look very different. Uh, so you, know, you think of a capture plan as some complex document. Well, it may have elements of that, but it may it may just be a series of templates and checklists. It could be consistent use of your CRM for gathering information on an opportunity. But what we're stressing here is the uh, mental exercise, if you will, the mental work that goes in to planning and winning opportunities. So BD leaders understand that that uh, captures evolve as well. So before any real capture planning goes on, you have an ident have a, an ID uh, excuse me an opportunity identified. You're really in a pre pre planning state, and some of the concepts about is this thing real? Do we have a chance? Uh, what, what action should we be taking to improve our position for the previous slide? And is this real? I mean, will the customer in fact buy it? All of that stuff's gonna be really fuzzy. And as, it, as you move along, what you try to do is improve your understanding of the opportunity and take information that may be in individuals' heads, right? And bring a team approach to planning, uh, information sharing, taking actions, improving competitive position. And while you still may not be certain if the, if the buyer is going to be willing to take the action and sign the contract, that will become clearer and clearer as the opportunity uh, planning and execution progresses. And the other thing I think this is to me is the, I'll call it the corporate conscience slide. Uh, it's related to discriminators. As BD leaders, it's incumbent on us to always be asking the question, what makes us different? Can we win this thing? Do we have any real discriminators to win this opportunity? We here at Shipley define discriminator as a feature of our offer that is important to the customer, first of all, and that one, one or more of our competitors do not have. So if I have a salesperson or a capture manager telling me that we have a high win probability, I have to be the corporate conscience and say, tell me why. What are our discriminators? Why is the, this customer going to pick us? And if they don't have good answers, I say, wrong answer. Go back and figure out what's really important to them, what their issues are, and what we can put in our proposal that will create differentiation and improve our probability of winning. So the focus on discriminators is a key uh, making sure that the money being spent on business development is being applied to winnable opportunities. Great. Yeah, that's a great, great explanation. Yeah, if we can't answer that basic question, you know, well, <laughs> why would they choose us? You, then you have to question why we're spending money and, and resource. Thank you, Daryl. Um, uh, one question that came in a little earlier, uh, I'll go back to a little bit. Uh, do you endorse the question? Do you endorse gate reviews for all prime and sub opportunities? Um, I, my answer to that is yes, but the gate review process must be tailored to the specific opportunity and our role. If we're a subcontractor um, on an opportunity, we still want to be involved in some of those decision gates uh, because our reputation's on the line. Um, our workload, work share percentage is on the line. And so I would say to some degree, yes, we endorse gate reviews, 
whether we're uh, on, on all opportunities, but it might be very informal. In fact, another question that came in, do we have suggestions for non-public sector decision-making on bids? Uh, same thing applies. In business to business, when we're, we're selling a solution to a business, some of these decisions are quick and informal. Uh, the challenge in business to business is we've got very aggressive, assertive sales teams out there that absolutely feel we need to propose on everything so they can meet their quota. And we have to, as leaders, we have to provide that unbiased balance between reality and the objective they have of closing the deal and meeting their quota. So we have to balance corporate versus individual priorities. I hope that helps uh, a little bit. Okay, so understanding and engaging and capture is crucial for a business development leader at in any company, and uh, no matter what market uh, markets we might compete in. Uh, this kind of, yeah, we've already talked about this a little bit, but this goes back to the idea of being collaborative, um, helping as a leader, helping smooth transition from where we start on the left, including finance, Janae, right? The, obviously, finance has had a key input into the strategic plan, Moving that toward account planning, capture planning, uh, a proposal management plan, if you will, and a closure plan. How do we actually execute on this contract? A good business development leader does not create stovepipes uh, so that a certain group of people thinks that they own capture and they wall it off and they don't want any input or interaction or crossover. The best business development organizations have fuzzy lines, and they promote transition, interactivity, integration uh, across this, this life cycle that we've already talked about. Well, and Brad, as, as the opportunities evolve, the business opportunities evolve, the, the strategic plan can't be ignored. Um, and you talked about um, based on your business, are you pursuing the, the right business? What what is important to you? Is it is it is it revenue? Is it bottom line? What's important um, from the financial perspective? And so, you know, everything everything has to be looked at. Um, everyone needs to again gather together so that um, you're making the right decision on this. Yeah, good. Thank you. And then. Uh, Again, we're, we're kind of getting tactical on this one, but uh, I, I know, David, you've shared some war stories. Um, when, we, when we actually are in, in the process of, of pursuing uh, a major opportunity, and we're, we're at a point where we've got to hold some kind of kickoff meeting. It might be a proposal kickoff meeting, might be kind of a pursuit kickoff meeting, uh, you know, one of these decision gate meetings. David, how important is it that it, at the leadership executive level that people in these kickoff meetings feel supported? Oh, it's absolutely critical, Brad. I mean, you know, one of the things we always ask of our clients that we work for is give us the highest level. And if that's the CEO, that's the person we want. Get that person down here to suggest to us why we are pursuing this. What is their stake in the game? What is their commitment to supporting us? And how are they going to uh, give us the resources and the support we need? And so it's absolutely critical that we have that the highest possible leadership available so that, in fact, they can tell the team and guide the team as to what's going on. Incredibly important. Good. Thank you. So no uh, no hands off approach. Be be involved, uh, especially on key enterprise or, or strategic pursuits. Uh, finally, the last priority we we want to address here, and uh, you know again this could be a two three four day <laughs> uh, uh, workshop if you will, but it's this idea of business development leaders execute change. You notice we didn't use the word manage. 
uh, change is pretty hard to manage. It's, it's really executing and making it happen. It goes back to this very first discussion we had. How committed are we as business development leaders? If there has to be change in our organization, it could be people, it could be process, it could be infrastructure, it could be market redirection. How committed are we to bring about change and, and be change leaders? Uh, uh, out of Jack Welsh's book, real change agents comprise less than 10% of all business people. Real change agents have courage, and David used that word, a certain fearlessness about the unknown. So as we think about how to improve our organizations, business development, our companies, change becomes really, really a big deal. So here's a very common uh, change curve. You know, when we are going to try to improve our organization, introduce change, execute change, you know, this is kind of the feeling we get from our, usually from our teams. You know, there, there's people that are saying, hey, I'm happy as I am. Don't bother me. I'm satisfied. Leave me alone. And then people, as we start executing change, go into this denial mode. Well, this really isn't relevant to my work. I'm just going to keep my head down and do my job. And then, unfortunately, we start seeing this resistance built up. Well, I'm not having any of this. I'm going to kind of keep doing it my way. You know, again, this is a very common change curve. Then, finally, hopefully, you get this minority or this group saying, hey, maybe this will work. And they go through this exploration phase. And then people start building hope if we're doing this right. You know what? I can see how we can make this work. I can really see why this is going to improve our, our BD organization. And finally, back to the commitment to perform. It, not, it doesn't just have to be our commitment. It has to be everybody's commitment to change, to get better, and to improve. So this is a real common cycle we go through as business development leaders or leaders of any kind when we try to implement or execute change in our company. We have to expect this, we have to be prepared for it, and we have to work with it. It will happen. And so getting past this um, is, is a key. It's a key to business development leadership. So. Here we've just bulleted out a list of things that maybe we could all focus on. You know, if, if we are trying to execute change and improve and get better, what do we need to do? You know, well, maybe we need to start with documenting our process. You know, we're, we're, doing, we're living in an ad hoc environment. It's not working. Um, maybe we need to do as David suggested and implement some decision gates, you know, and, and put some discipline in place. Maybe we need to do what Daryl said and get involved in, in our capture earlier, that, that uh, fourth bullet point there. Are we really qualifying our pipeline and, and, and whittling that down and, and getting involved early? And then I'll jump to the bottom, you know, lead by example. That's what leaders do. You know, they roll up their sleeves, they, they get involved, they get to know their team, they get to know their customer and lead by example. So there's a, a quick tick list of things we could do. Just, we'll kind of end on this. Um, here's a quote from Harry Potter. Um, it's a curious thing, Harry, but perhaps those who are best suited to power are those who have never sought it. Those who, like you, have leadership thrust upon them and take up the mantle because they must and find to their own surprise that they wear it well. You know, not all of us ask for leadership positions. Um, not all of us were trained to be leaders or educated to be leaders. Sometimes it is thrust upon us and expectations are pretty high. And if we're gonna be leaders, we have to embrace that. And we can't use that as a crutch and say, I didn't ask for this. We have to embrace it uh, and, and take it, take it on. So a couple things we can do, you know, we, we can adopt existing processes and really try to make, make those work. The ones that are out there, we can adapt, uh, existing systems to our organization, our structure, 
And certainly we need to think about advancing our maturity as a BD organization. What steps do we need to take to go from being ad hoc to being really, really good at what we do? Uh, I'm just going to let you look at this on your own. We're, I don't want to uh, infringe on your time, but, but Cotter put out some eight really good steps to improving our change um, our change management, if you will, our executing change. You know, we've got to establish that urgency as a baseline. The bottom line, getting to step eight, it's got to become part of our culture. If winning is expected, that has to become part of our culture, and we have to take steps to get there. Uh, I like that second to the last step, step seven, never let up. You know, it, it's being a leader is hard. Uh, it, it takes energy. It takes passion. So those are a few things to consider, you know, as leaders as we try to try to uh, improve our organization. So back to where we started, a commitment to perform, putting in place some metrics, some measurements, and then taking the time to verify. It doesn't do much good to set metrics and establish metrics if we don't go back and verify our success or failures. So let's, I just encourage all of us to take that challenge to see how committed we are to really perform well. So thanks again for your time, everybody. I, I know there's plenty of options <laughs> during this hour of your, your day. I hope this has been helpful. David, Daryl, Janae, Mallory, um, thank you for putting this together for gathering insight from industry. Uh, I'll put up our contact information. Feel free to contact any of us if you have questions. Um, we'll, we'll be happy to try to address those. So again, thank you. We'll post this on our website. Uh, you can uh, replay it. Uh, we'll also have the slides available to you uh, viewing on our website. Thanks so much. Have a great day.